How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. I got multiple comments on YouTube and even on Instagram referring to this particular book, Die With Zero. On the surface, it's a very catchy title. It makes you want to read it to figure out what the author is saying and how do you exactly die with zero. Today, I'm gonna to go over the main points of this book and also suggest if you should actually buy this book and read it for yourself. This video is brought to you by Moomoo. You can get five free shares of stock, each of them valued up to $3,500 just for opening up account and depositing various amounts. Exclusive to this channel, on top of all these shares that you're gonna get, you can get an additional share of AMC stock guaranteed as long as you deposit $100 before February 7th. Check out my referral link down in the video description below. The idea is simple. You want to enjoy all of your money while you're alive, not be in the grave with the most money and then when you die, all of this money gets divvied up. Maybe according to your will, maybe not. It may not end up in the right hands with your particular intention. So it's best to spend your money, donate it or give it to the intended people while you're still alive. One of the main concerns with dying with zero is what about the children? you might want to leave some for them. And the premise of this book is you should actually give it to them while you're still alive. Maybe not to the point of spoiling them. So you might want to set up some kind of structure where they get invested more and more as they age more. What about charities? Rather than dying and leaving a really, really huge amount, why don't you give the money while you're still alive rather than have like millions and millions of dollars that you just kind of socked away and made bigger and bigger. How did I with zero? This book says that you need to have a more accurate estimate of your life expectancy based on age, race, if you smoke, if you are obese, what kind of health problems you have, what kind of health problems your parents have or your grandparents have. You enter this into various calculators online and it will pop out a number. For me, it says, I think it was like 81 for one calculator and 84 for a different calculator. But for this life expectancy thing, how can you believe this totally, right? You could get run over by a bus. If no accidents happen to you, you could still live much longer than this. And I'll talk about more about this a little bit later. One interesting thing that this book talks about is that your burn rate actually steps down quite significantly as you get older and older. And this is kind of morbid. It threw out numbers like if you're in the 50s, you spend, let's say, 60K a year. 10 years later in your 60s, you're probably gonna spend about $10,000 less even with healthcare factored in. And then in the 70s, you're gonna spend yet another $10,000 less. Personally, I actually have some hobbies that I no longer want to do because I feel like if I break a bone or something like skateboarding or snowboarding, I just don't want to get hurt and crack my skull or something. Whereas in my twenties, I'm like, oh yeah, let me, you know, daredevil, you know, I'm like jumping on half pipes and things. So when you factor this into trying to use all your money until it reaches zero, you actually have to spend a little bit more upfront when you're younger to kind of compensate for your lower expenditure when you're older. You can also remove a little bit of risk by buying annuities where you pay a lump sum in and you're gonna get some amount per month, every single month until the day you die. The premise of this book is to get the most out of life. You have a certain window of opportunity to participate in certain activities. For example, snowboarding, let's say it's 20s to 30s. Cruises, you can participate them in your 20s and I personally have, but you can do this just as well all the way up to 80s. But maybe because you can do them all the way up to 80s, maybe you don't want to do your cruises now. You just save them for later so you at least Maybe you have some other stuff to do when you are like 70 or 80 years old. You should spend more money today in activities, even though sometimes it might be splurging to get the maximum enjoyment and maximum amount of memories. You should spend them at the right time at the right age. Now, when you get a certain experience, let's say you went on some trip, right? You're always going to recall it. Maybe it's like a really, really good trip. Like for me, I went to the Caribbean. I always remember about laying on this black sand beach and how warm it felt with the waves kind of gently hitting me and then I'm just kind of like sliding around. That was like in pure heaven and I remember it many, many times. That Caribbean trip cost me probably like $2,000 back when I was in my 20s. Every single time that you think about how great it was, you get a boost of experience points. The idea is to collect as many of those as you can. The experience part of it when you're actually experiencing it is one amount of enjoyment that you get but you also get little bits and pieces of enjoyment trailing off 
over the years so then you can add all those up and it becomes a really really big amount of enjoyment before you go i should spend all my money for experiences today in various points of the book it did mention that for people that aren't earning more than what they need this actually is not possible to spend more today because you need to save money for your future still it's for people that are saving too much i overall enjoyed this it's a very very quick read there are a handful of good ideas in here but i feel like there could be a little bit more a little bit more content in here maybe like 50 percent more and then i would feel like the value of this book is there it panders to a really large audience it always goes do this but not to an extreme you should not spend everything neither should you save everything but do something in between but it doesn't really name exactly where in between so it's like okay don't do the extremes do something right in the middle whenever you have an author say something like this something very very bold and you pick up the book and you read it right you want them to practice what they preach and although there's an example in here talking about the author having a very very lavish party that spent a significant portion of his net worth what i personally want to know is if he actually spent down his net worth nowhere in this whole book does it talk about that where the book essentially says that somewhere around midlife 40s or 50s you should be starting to spend down your net worth you reach a certain peak right let's say he has like 5 million 10 million or whatever million right it should be going down instead and what I want to know is, is his net worth actually, you know, heading its way down? It's on the downward slope. He doesn't actually have to review that his actual net worth, but I want like a, like a little acknowledgement. It's like, yes, I personally am doing this, not just an example of a lavish party, because even if you have the lavish party, you could be earning, you know, 10 times that amount per year and your net worth would still be going up. I've actually talked about making your net worth go down before. I had a talk with a retired person who uh, passed away since then, and I had a conversation with him where he talked about, you actually at some point need to spend down your entire life savings a little bit, right? It actually doesn't make sense to just keep on earning all the way up until you're dead, all the way up until you're in the hospital bed and you're still earning and your net worth still keeps on going up. You can leave this to your spouse, leave this to your children. But essentially, if you leave all this to whoever, you don't get to experience all the spending of it. Spending not in the sense of buying stuff, nor is it even buying experiences for yourself, but spending in the sense that when you gift the money to these people, you are spending it. And if you gift it while you're still alive, you may reap some rewards of satisfaction where you're like, yes, you know, I, I did this. I, I actually gave it to them in person. Making your net worth go down is very disconcerting, especially when you have been making your net worth go up the past three or four decades, right? All of a sudden you're like, okay, you gotta force yourself to be a spender rather than a saver. You save a lot. Like for myself, I save like almost 100% of my income. I like derive a lot of value out of credit card churning and things like that. And I spend that as my daily spending. So then essentially everything that I actually earn on YouTube or whatever, it just goes right in the bank and it just makes my net worth, you know, trickle up higher and higher. So now let's say you're faced with trying to spend your net worth down. This is very, very difficult to do and it probably requires some practice and some kind of reassurance that you're not gonna run out of money before you die. Let's say you're not trying to make it go to zero all the way. Maybe let's say you wanna spend down half of your net worth. For some people though, I think spending this money down might be more stressful than it's worth because if you're stressed, then maybe you're gonna die sooner because you're just worried that you're gonna run out of money. Here's another critique about estimating when you will actually die. Let's say you do all the calculators, it says, your estimated lifespan will be 81 years old, 84 years old. But you have to realize this is a bell curve distribution. The average person is going to live till 81, but there's gonna be a few percent of people and it might just be you that is gonna live till 90 or 100. And if you do this, if you try to spend it to zero right until 81, you will run out of money and then you're gonna have another 10 years to live. What are you going to do in this case? Well, maybe you can 
save more money, you can estimate that you're gonna spend down to zero when you're 90 years old. If you do this, you're not gonna be completely efficient because if you plan for dying at 90, but you die at 81 instead, you're gonna have nine years of living expenses that is still unspent. Due to the inaccuracy of estimating when you will actually die, you are then forced to have some kind of margin of safety. And having this safety means you will not die with exactly zero. Far from it. Because if you want some kind of comfort that you won't run out, you're gonna have to have a pretty large margin of safety. 10 years, maybe 20 years, because you might just live that much more longer. Medicine might get better all of a sudden, and boom, you know, you live longer just like that. Still, even with all this critique, I think the idea is sound. Dying with zero just kind of pushes you to spend a little bit more while you are alive rather than saving every single penny. This book is called Die With Zero by Bill Perkins. It's around $13, $14 on Amazon. I'll leave a link to that down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more.